for the rest of this, this activity, I don't want you to have a grayscale image or a duotone image, so I would like you to hit Edit Undo. Uh, make sure you're actually in Photoshop before you do that. Uh, choose Edit and then uh, Undo. You'll notice that in Photoshop, it's a little frustrating because you can only undo once. Um, after the first Edit Undo, you have to do Edit Step Backwards. Um, I do not require students to memorize key commands. It's not something that that I feel is something that should be tested. I think that you should memorize key commands as they are helpful for you. And as someone who teaches three or four different software applications, I know that they're different between each program. But the edit undo and the edit step backward may be key commands that you want to memorize. The key commands are listed. If you do edit step backwards, it will show you right here that it is, um, this is the command key, which used to be the Apple key. And so it's Option, Command, Z, and that would allow you to use keyboard shortcuts or key commands to hit Step Backward. I would like you to hit Edit Step Backward until your image goes back to the original RGB that it was before we started playing around with it. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just close out of the picture and say Do Not Save and then reopen it. Um, because you saved it as a Photoshop file, make sure that you reopen that Photoshop file. Let's jump back to the lecture. Okay, so now we're going to talk about color management, which is what this lecture is really about. Um, color management is needed to control the consistency and quality of images when output. And again, I'm saying output instead of printing because when I see it on a screen, whether that's the iPhone or a computer screen or a digital billboard somewhere along the highway, or I print it on a printing press or a photo printer in the printing lab or whatever it might be, when I output it, that's what color management helps me um, work with. I want to make sure that there's consistency and quality of the images from the screen to wherever I'm outputting. So display devices and various printing processes present images differently, causing inconsistencies in the way that we see the image. A lot of the times we'll say the printer didn't print it right, but what we really should be saying is that the communication between the computer and the output device were not in sync. So inconsistencies can occur in a variety of ways. First, viewing web images on different display devices or computer monitors um, can be completely different. So I'm sitting in a classroom right now that has 12 computers in it. If I opened up the same image and put it full screen on all 12 computers, each computer monitor could display the image differently because each computer monitor could be set to different profiles, they could be older or newer, there's just many different things that can cause that, but just looking at it on different computers could be an issue. And so one thing that might happen to you in the Art 1280 class is you go home and you're working on something and you think it looks great, then you come to school and you hop on a school computer and you think, why does this look really green? My image at home was really yellow, but now it looks really green. In addition, if you're in a class that maybe is going to put your artwork on a projector and they're going to critique it in front of the class, the projector can display the color differently. It can have a different resolution or a different color profile um, that may create uh, inconsistencies in the way that you think the image should look and the way that the projector thinks it should be displayed on the screen. Um, you can have issues if you're using a calibrated display and then you hop on an uncalibrated display. Um, there are ways to ensure that the color is accurate by deciding what accurate means and then connecting that between all of your devices. And the first way to do that is to calibrate your screen. There's many ways to do that and there's a little video that's embedded in the slideshow that you should watch. Um, you do not have to calibrate your screen for Art 1280. This is a skills-based Photoshop class, so we want you to understand that it exists. And when you move on and you take the advanced Photoshop class, all of those sections are on campus and you'll learn how to calibrate your computer monitor in those classes. Um, you can also have issues if you're viewing a CMYK image on an RGB display device or an RGB image printed on a CMYK printer. And so if you're looking at an image on a screen, it's being displayed to you in red, green, and blue because it's being illuminated with light and the wavelengths of light are what's creating the color. But if you're supposed to print it, so you're looking at an image that has a color mode of CMYK, there's no way it can be the same because you're looking at an image technically that's displayed in RGB, but the image itself thinks it's a CMYK image. So when you print it, you can have some issues there. And then vice versa. If you're looking at an image on screen that's RGB and you think, oh, this looks great, and then you print it and it looks completely different, it's because you're looking at a gamut of color, the range of color that a screen can reproduce in RGB, 
and then when you output it, you're outputting it in a completely separate color gamut um, that's for printing of CMYK. In general, images on screen will look much brighter than those printed, and that's where the majority of the issue happens. So we have really bright colors on screen and we think they look fantastic and then we print them and then we get frustrated because they're dark um, they're more muddy than on the screen and, and and we'll talk about why that happens okay then we can have issues if we print an image using different types of printers and so the two most common printers that you may encounter are toner based or laser printers they print with powder and inkjet printers they print with liquid ink and you can tell the difference between the two. If your printer says warming up, it's a toner based or powder based printer. If your image just starts printing and your machine might shake and there's a head going back and forth across printing in lines, it's an, uh, it's an inkjet printer. The way that the ink is applied or the or the, the colors applied to the paper is different and so you can get inconsistencies there. In addition, if you're going to be creating artwork for commercial output, different printing processes for commercial printing can have effect on the color. And so an offset lithography printing press might be able to produce different colors than a flexography printing press versus a screen printing printing, printing press, etc. And then most importantly, the number one thing that you can you can affect as the student creating artwork in Art1280 is if you view colors out of gamut and you think that you can create a color that you can't, that is how you can become frustrated that your images are not printing the way they should. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that when we go to print something, instead of looking at really bright, fantastic colors on screen and saying, oh, it looks fantastic, we wanna get a realistic uh, expectation of what those really bright on-screen colors would look like if you translated them to the duller colors of printing. Printing prints duller, it's just a fact of printing. And so if you're looking at colors that don't exist in your output gamut, then of course you're going to be frustrated that they don't print the way that they're supposed to. And so what do I mean by colors that are out of gamut? Um, if you look at the image on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that RGB colors are really bright. And so you can look at the left image on the little uh, rainbow or the left image on the little scene with the with the sky and the trees. Both of the left hand images are really bright and they're vibrant and they look fantastic. Um, RGB color mode can produce really bright vibrant colors because they're literally illuminated with light. There's little lights in your computer that make them really bright. But when you print something or you translate it to cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, there's no light behind your printing. You apply ink on paper and the, the light reflects or bounces onto the paper and so you cannot produce really bright vibrant colors and so what would happen is all those colors that you think you're creating, all these colors over here on the left hand side that are really bright, they will print in the closest available shade that exists in the CMYK color gamut and so what will happen is it will take this really bright blue and it will say well I can't print that blue but I can print this blue and all of those blue shades will be translated to a darker shade and you can see, and it's dramatic on this picture, obviously, because I want you to get the idea of it. But you can see that the sky is really bright blue on the left-hand side, and the greens are really bright green. But when you translate them to a color mode that doesn't have lights behind it, you get duller shades of different colors. And what I would like you to start working on is recognizing that if I look at this image on screen, I need to find a way to know that it's going to look like this when I go to print it. If you have a realistic expectation of what something's going to look like, you can make sure that you're, you're making choices for the things that you want it to look like, if that makes any sense.